It's week three, everybody. One final chance for teams to get their feet underneath them before the real fun begins. Conference play, and we had some good ones tonight. This is Football Friday Night, and I'm Jacob Seuss. And I'm Jonathan Acosta. Throughout non-conference play, we've had some excellent rivalries, and tonight we had another good one with the Battle of Highway 71, our five newest game of the week. Yeah, that's the best part about non-conference play, all these rivalries, and tonight it was Waldron and Mansfield. These two, you'll remember, didn't get to play last year. Game canceled due to COVID, so you can bet they were a little extra fired up for this one. The Battle of 71, the Scott County feud, call it whatever you want, but these two eager to go. And the game gets kicked off with a pass to Cole Kindle, and then Daniel Burton off to the races. 44 yards on the catch and run. Can't bring him down there. Tigers, oh, get <laughs> off me. Tigers up seven, nothing early. Our man wanted that score, but Waldron says not so fast. After turning the ball over on downs, Michael Grano with the nice heads up play takes the deflection interception reservation for seven. We were all tied up with less than five minutes off the clock, but it would be the closest Waldron got to going home with the win. Solid drive by the Tigers. 18 yard touchdown from Kindle to Peyton Martin, 13 to seven. Kindle and Burton connect for their second touchdown. This one a little closer to the end zone as Burton scampers 18 yards to the house. Mansfield takes a commanding 20 to seven lead into the half and Kindle and Burton connect for their third touchdown. And it's a final tonight, Mansfield. They're gonna go on to knock off Waldron, 33 to seven. 6A West Action, Greenwood visiting Silent Springs. Jacob, you know what the Bulldogs' favorite movie series is? Tell me. Fast and Furious, because that's how they started this game. That's Hunter beautiful. Houston deep to Grant Carnes on the third play of the game, and it was quickly 6-0 Greenwood. Ensuing Panthers drive. Jackson's still at quarterback. He's going to go to the air, but it ends up in Greenwood's hands. Landon Nelms with the pick. He returns it all the way inside the 10. That set up another Bulldogs touchdown. Then Greenwood with their third possession on offense. It would result in Greenwood's third touchdown. Houston hits LJ Robbins in the end zone for a second TD pass of the quarter, and the Bulldogs run away with it. This one was a 61-7 final as Greenwood improves to 2-0 in conference play. That's what I call efficiency. Next yes. up, Shiloh hosting Lincoln Christian, the number sixth ranked team in all of Oklahoma. First drive, those Saints go right down the field. Bo Williams plows in to make it 7-0 Saints. Bulldogs, though, go right down the field and tie it, so Williams has to just score again. Bo's got reservations for two, but the Bulldogs go right down and score again. So the Saints have to add some separation. This time, Eli Wisdom heads to the air and hits Carter Holman. Wide open in the corner of the end zone, Shiloh had a 21-14 lead. Second quarter, Saints going for it on fourth and two in their own territory. Jeff Conaway trusting the offense and it pays off. If you can dodge a bulldog, you can dodge a wrench. Wisdom dodge, dips and dives through defenders. He's gone, 82 yards to the house. Big win for Shiloh. They're gonna knock off Lincoln Christian 42-35 as they head into 5A play starting next Friday. Bold strategy not tackling that guy. Bentonville at Rockhurst and KC. The Tigers offense played like they got some good barbecue up there. Carter Knight to Eli Brooks. That's a 45 yard touchdown pass. Bentonville jumped out in front with a seven nothing lead. Josh Ficklin, the running back for the Tigers, he recently committed to Illinois State this week. Congrats, congrats to him on that huge announcement, and I'm sure the Redbirds love to see this. 65-yard TD run for Ficklin to the house, and it was 14-7 to Bentonville. And then how about some more from the pass game? Carter Nye here going to C.J. Brown. The stream freezes. Brown does not. 70-yard <laughs> touchdown pass. That's how 20, quick he was. Yeah, he was so fast, they couldn't catch up with him. 21-7 to Bentonville. The Tigers get the win up in KCM as Bamboo takes it 30 to 7. We had the battle of two undefeated teams tonight in Oklahoma with Spyro hosting Moldro. It looked like it was a little homecoming night. We love that. Moldro already up 21 zip, but Spyro's Bryson Graham, he's going to hit Caden Gregg, who does the rest. Get off Ooh. me into the end zone, but it was still a 21 6 Moldro advantage. Trendon Collins, former Five News Athlete of the Week, we know how he does it. 30 yard run here. He was cooking all night long, but Muldrow's defense also came to play. Bryson Graham, he's gonna give it a Hunter Sparks, but there is stuffing. Final score from this one, Muldrow, they're gonna hand Spyro its first loss of the year. 34-7 is your final. And when we return, a battle of undefeated teams in Gentry where the Pioneers were playing host to Pea Ridge. We're just getting started here on Football Friday Night.
Football Friday Night on 5 News. Welcome back into Football Friday Night. It's been a great start for the Boonville Bearcats, going 2-0, but that's no surprise after the Bearcats went 13-2 last season, but one of those losses came in the state title game to Harding. Tonight, Boonville took on Harding, once again looking for a little revenge. Boonville looking to knock off a Harding team that has won the last two state titles, and Harding would strike first. Owen Miller tossed to Andy McGallard, Quick jog into the end zone, and Harding was off and running. Wildcats looking for some more. Miller here with a high pass, and there's McGallard again. Two Harding drives, two Harding touchdowns. Boonville looking to get themselves back in it. Next up for the Bearcats, Peyton Tatum. Quick toss to Trace Hall. Check this out. Hall refusing to go down. Still can't bring him down. Look at that man go. Finally gets tossed out of bounds. First down, Bearcats. Tatum here with a handoff. Fakes the whole defense. Dax Goff, 25 yards for the touchdown. But that was pretty much it for Boonville tonight. Harding once again gets the best of the Bearcats, 44 to 14. And out in Gentry, two teams on the rise are the Pioneers and the Pea Ridge Blackhawks. Both have started the season 2-0, but something had to give tonight when the two went head-to-head -head in the final game for them before conference play got underway. The Pioneers playing host in this 5A versus 4A matchup. Justin Bigham had his Pioneers ready to play tonight. We'll pick things up in the second quarter. Blackhawks with the ball. Gavin Dixon rolls out to his right and throws an absolute dot to Luke Vandermolen. A great throw for the touchdown, and Pea Ridge was within a score. But the Gentry offense was humming tonight. Fourth and five, quarterback Chris Bell says, I'll do this myself. Scrambles in for the score, and it was a two-score game. You like that conversion? Wait until you watch this one. A third and 29 after a couple flags. They just hand it off to Ty Hayes just trying to pick up some yards, but he's determined to get to the sticks, and he somehow stays on his feet and picks up the first down. That set this up. Bell back to pass here, and he's going to connect with Braden Warren over the middle for the touchdown. The Gentry Pioneers are 3-0 and to start the season. They win big at home, 59-28. All right, next up, we got Prairie Grove hosting Metro Christian, one of the best teams from the Oklahoma area. But Prairie Grove going to smack him in the mouth to start off the game. Kickoff, Connor Hub says, let's start this game with a bang. He takes it all the way to the house. Can you say sweetest play of the week? That man wants some ice cream. Tigers off to a 7 to nothing lead. Uh, then Metro Christian got the ball in, went to work. Breck Nam with the pass. We're tied at seven. Metro gets the ball again, end of the first quarter. This time it's Jackson Grimes with the score, make it 14-7. Tag Campbell here's gonna run it in for another touchdown, make it 21-7. But Prairie Grove would get a score before the half. Five News Athlete of the Week from this previous week, Ethan Miller runs it in for the touchdown to end the quarter. But Metro took a 27-14 lead into the break. They would go on to win this game 41-21. All right, let's head down to Van Buren where we had the pointers matching up against Greenbrier. And we're going to pick up the action in the first quarter here. See Van Buren with the ball, the throw to Peyton Shire, and he runs this thing all the way into the end zone. The pointers strike first. They take a 7-0 lead after the extra point was good. Here, Greenbrier with the ball. King Griffin hands it off to Parker Roberts. He picks up the yards for the first down. Then they hand it off again, but this time a heads-up play by the pointer defense. They punch the ball out at the goal line. They recover the fumble. That proved to be a huge momentum play. Beginning of the second quarter, Bryce Perkins runs that ball in himself for the touchdown. That made it a 13-0 game. Skip ahead to the third quarter. Perkins this time going to the air, finds his receiver Trenton Cooley, and that's another Van Buren touchdown. They were up 33-0, and the pointers win big time, 40-14. Big game for Van Buren tonight, but still to come, we have a cross-state battle. Mina hosting Pecola. That and more when Football Friday Night rolls on. <laughs> Watching Football Friday Night on 5 News. 
Week three of the high school football season. We're still going here on Football Friday night. One more to go, and it's a cross-state battle. Mina Pacola. That's right. Both teams sitting 2-1 and one on the season. They were looking to gain a little more momentum in their final tune-up before conference and district play get underway next week. That's the theme of the night. We're going to jump second quarter. Mina up 7-zip. Pacola knocking on the door. Looks like a busted play here. But Braden Hardwick gets through and into the end zone. Indians had a one-point lead after the two-point conversion. But Mina, they're going to take the lead right back. Jaden Castillo. Ooh, just yeah, plowed his head there. That's a big boy. Plows his way into the end zone. Bearcats up 13-7. And then Mina is going to score again. Colby Davis, long touchdown run. No one can bring him down. Mina is going to win a tight battle. Pacola came back late. Mina wow. holds on by one single point. 35-34 was your final Arguably Mina. best game of the week, 35-34. Closest game. That was a great one. Both teams really good this season. We will see where they wind up with conference and district play, like you mentioned, beginning next week. So let's take a look at some other scores from tonight. Some Oklahoma teams looking pretty good. Panama taking down Wilberton. Poto with a nine-point win over Chandler. Look at four, 50. Nothing. You talk about putting a, a beat down in just a blowout win that you have to feel good about on both sides of the ball. I think 54 nothing would do the job right there, right? Yeah, we really like uh, those teams from the Sooner State. They, they did really well tonight. The left side of that scoreboard, maybe not so great, but the Lavaca Golden Arrows, that's a team that uh, really could sneak up on you once conference play begins next week. And they're looking really good, 43-13. to 13, uh, Another team getting it done on, on both sides of the ball. You have to look there. Harbor, a very tough task going out to Mustang, one of the better teams out in Oklahoma. That's a far road trip and everything. I, I think they'll be happy just to get back home, yes. get to stay within the state of Arkansas next week. Play some of their own teams that, yeah. who obviously are good, but Harvard, they'll be a little more familiar with them. Yes, and Harbor yeah. goes out of their way every year to play some of the best non-conference opponents of the year. Mm -hmm. Chris Wood annually says it just does nothing but makes them a better team. Yeah, so We'll, we'll see how they look like that. 7A West, a lot of good teams. We'll, we'll be excited to get conference plays started up in, in more of the conferences in our area next week. But tomorrow, it is week three as well of the college football season. And look who's coming to town. It's Bobby Petrino, 6 p.m. Kit tomorrow. And I think after last Friday when Football Friday Night ended and we got up for the 11 a.m. kick the next day, I don't know if anyone's more happy than we are for a 6 o'clock kick tomorrow. That's right. And I think... It's perfect. Like, this game, there'd be, I feel like, a lot less energy about it if it was another 11 a.m. kick. People, right. It's a 6 p.m. kick under the lights. First one under the lights uh, this season at Razorback Stadium. Allows people to go out and tailgate, have a little bit of fun. You know the environment's going to be rowdy with Petrino back in town. So maybe it's a week where the storylines aren't as much about the game mm -hmm. in and of itself on the field, but just... Having Petrino back in town, we're looking forward to see what kind of reception he gets from the fan base. Absolutely, and I think it is fair for the fans to probably overlook Missouri State after playing Cincinnati and South Carolina. But you know Sam Pittman is a head coach. He's in year three. His team, they're not going to overlook the Bears. They're going to go out and play them like any other week and as they look to go 3-0 and for the second consecutive season. And then, quick note, baseball season isn't until the spring, but a huge announcement today. We know Tennessee and Arkansas have developed a little bit of a baseball rivalry. Those two will be playing this year for the first time since two seasons ago, and it's going to happen right here in Fayetteville at Baumwalker Stadium. That should be a fantastic series. Should be a lot of good, and uh, Arkansas volleyball got the win tonight. Arkansas soccer did not, but I think that pretty much takes care of it. Week three of high school football in the books. We'll see you tomorrow for the Razorbacks.